So let us draw up a table of oxidative phosphorylation and the ATP yield. So let's look at all the processes beforehand which provided uh, the electron carriers, beginning with glycolysis. So glycolysis, if you remember, produced two NADHs. So now, if NADH, the electron carrier, is in complex one, complex one will pump out a total of eight hydrogen ions from the matrix into the intermembrane space because for one NADH it's four remember and then for complex two nothing is pumped out complex three uh, four hydrogen ions gets pumped up into the intermembrane space for each NADH so because it's two it gives us eight hydrogen ions and then for complex four uh, two hydrogen ions are pumped each for each NADH so four hydrogen ions so the total hydrogen ions pumped by two NADH molecules uh, from all the complexes equates to 20 hydrogen ions. So now we have 20 hydrogen ions in the intermembrane space from two NADH uh, H's, the electron carriers. And so if we put this through the um, ATP synthase, where four hydrogen ions will give us one ATP, this would mean that 20 hydrogen ions will give a, will produce 5 ATP. Similarly with the preparatory step which um, gave us 2 NADHs, this means that it's exactly the same, complex 1 will pump out 8 hydrogen ions in the intermembrane space, complex 3 8 hydrogen ions, complex 4 4 hydrogen ions, giving a total again of 20 hydrogen ions. And so the total amount of ATP produced um, from 20 hydrogen ions is 5 ATP because uh, 20 divided by 4 is 5. Uh, looking at the Krebs cycle, the Krebs cycle, if you remember, produced six NADHs. And so if six NADHs goes through complex one, um, this means that it would be six times four, because for each NADH, four hydrogen ions are being pumped from the matrix into the intermembrane space, which means that six times four is 24 hydrogen ions, which means complex three also uh, four hydrogen ions are pumped for each NADH, so 24 hydrogen ions in total. And complex 4, finally, 2 hydrogen ions for each NADH, so 6 times 2 is 12 hydrogen ions, giving a total um, of 60 hydrogen ions, which are pumped from the matrix into the intermembrane space. And so how much ATP would this create? Just 60 divided by 4, because 4 hydrogen ions makes 1 ATP, giving us um, 15 ATPs in total. The Krebs cycle, however, also produces 2 FADH2s, right? So what about these? Because we learned about NADH only in this diagram. We didn't learn about FADH. So where does FADH come into the picture? Well, it doesn't start at complex one, surprisingly. FADH is, um, passes the electrons from complex two, which is succinate dehydrogenase. So now I will rub out all these hydrogen ions which were pumped out by one NADH. And so now we will not look at NADH, um, NADH's electrons moving through the electron uh, chain, transport chains, but we will look at FADH and how, and how its electrons move and how many ATP it will produce. So where does FADH2 come from? If you remember from the Krebs cycle, the conversion from succinate to fumarate requires the enzyme succinate dehydrogenase, which is our complex two. And so through this conversion, FAD, which is, in, which is a part of complex two, will be reduced to FADH2. And FADH2 is what uh, provides the electrons to be transported through the electron transport chain. Now let's just look at the actual complex two. Now complex two actually is comprised of four uh, main parts, subunits, A, B, C, and D. We don't really need to know much about these, but essentially uh, in, in the center somewhere we have a, another series of iron centers which the electrons from NADH2 will go, will go through these um, iron centers and finally to ubiquinin. So the two electrons will go to ubiquinin and ubiquinin will turn to ubiquinol. Now ubiquinol uh, will then travel to complex 3, cytochrome C oxyreductase, where it will pass on the electrons to cytochrome C. During this process, complex 3 will also pump 400 ions from the matrix into the intermembrane space. 
Cytochrome C with the electrons will then travel to complex 4, cytochrome oxidase, where at complex 4, it will cause an additional two hydrogen ions to be pumped out from the matrix into the intermembrane space. So, as you can see, the transporting of electrons from FADH and NADH are very similar. However, FADH does not go through complex 1. NADH pumps 10 hydrogen ions in total through the electron transport chain. However, FADH only pumped 6 hydrogen ions from the matrix into the intermembrane space. Therefore, if 6 hydrogen ions were to go through the ATP synthase pump, it will only produce 1.5 ATP because 4 hydrogen ions makes 1 ATP. And so as you can see, FADH will only produce uh, will produce one less ATP than NADH would because FADH does not pass through complex one. And so if we go back to our previous table of our ATP yield, we look at the two FADHs and look at how many hydrogen ions it will pump. At complex one, it does not go through it, so it doesn't pump any hydrogen ions. Complex two, it doesn't pump any hydrogen ions. Complex three, it will pump out four hydrogen ions each giving a total of eight hydrogen ions. And so also complex four, one FADH will, will pump out two hydrogen ions. So two FADHs will pump out a total of four hydrogen ions. So the total hydrogen ions pumped from the matrix into the intermembrane space by two FADHs is 12 hydrogen ions. So how much ATP can 12 hydrogen ions produce? Well, we go 12 divided by four, which will give us three ATP produced by two um, FADHs. Now, to make things much a bit more confusing, in glycolysis, because the two NADHs are coming from the cytoplasm, not from inside the matrix, and so the two NADHs from glycolysis have to have some form of mechanism to move from the cytoplasm inside the matrix, right? Um, one of its way is through shuttles. There are two types of shuttles. One of them will cause the electron transport chain to not pump as much hydrogen ions from the matrix into the intermembrane space. And because this particular shuttle, the two NADHs from glycolysis will miss um, going through complex one. And so therefore, the amount of hydrogen ions pumped from complex one can vary from zero, four to eight hydrogen ions. So the total amount of hydrogen ions pumped will technically be um, either 12 or uh, between 12 and 20 hydrogen ions. So the amount of ATP produced can vary from 3 to 5 ATP for two NADHs from glycolysis. I hope that makes sense. And so why is this again? It is because these two NADHs uh, are coming from the cytoplasm and need some form of mechanism into the, to go inside the mitochondria. One of its mechanism will cause it to miss going through complex one of the electron transport chain. And so this will, this will cause uh, not as much hydrogen ions being pumped. So let's look at this particular shuttle. And the shuttle is known as the glycerol 3-phosphate shuttle. It is called glycerol 3-phosphate shuttle because it involves two enzymes known as glycerol 3-phosphate dehydrogenase. And the two enzymes are actually different in that one of them is situated in the mitochondrial inner membrane, such as here, and the other one is, is in the cytosol, in the cytoplasm. And so what happens is NADH will come from glycolysis. We're only looking at one NADH. Here. NADH is brought into the electron transport chain when it reduces dihydroxyacetone phosphate into glycerol 3 phosphate with the enzyme cytosolic glycerol 3 phosphate dehydrogenase. And so now we have glycerol 3 phosphate with the two electrons, you can say. Now, glycerol 3 phosphate will, can, will then be oxidized by the same enzyme, except in the mitochondria, glycerol 3 phosphate dehydrogenase, the mitochondrial one. And during this process, FAD is reduced to FADH2. And FADH2 is what provides the electrons to ubiquinin, converting it to ubiquinol. Ubiquinol will then move the electrons to complex 3, while complex C will then pump out 4 hydrogen ions per NADH, now FADH2. And then the electrons will move to cytochrome C of complex 3. Cytochrome C will then move to complex 4, 
where it will cause complex 4 to pump out two hydrogen ions per NADH, now FADH. And so as you can see, through this glycerol-3-phosphate shuttle mechanism, we are passing complex 1 and complex 2. So we're passing an addition of four hydrogen ions pumped by complex 1. And another amazing thing is that we begun with NADH from glycolysis, but we end up with FADH2, which will provide the electrons to ubiquinin. And as we know, FADH will actually uh, produce one less ATP than NADH would. And this all makes sense when you think about it. So now, if we go back to the graph, uh, we can see that the total ATP from oxidative phosphorylation produced from essentially one glucose molecule, we can say, uh, it equates to 26 to 28 ATPs, depending, remember, if we use the glycerol 3 phosphate shuttle. I hope this all made sense to you and I hope you enjoyed this video. Remember, I might have made some mistakes and another thing is that this electron transport chain oxidative phosphorylation is not actually fully understood yet, so it might sound all weird. Uh, thank you for watching. Please like, subscribe and...